Hi, how are you doing? My name is Alex Lee. I'm part of sales engineering here at Snowflake. I wanted to show you something really, really cool that's come out of Summit. We basically created data applications inside of Snowflake. So what we call that is the data apps framework. And I'm going to show you that right now. So if you have a look at this, this is my Snowflake account. I've just moved across from my dashboards tab to the marketplace tab. And if you looked um, and used marketplace before, you would notice that not a lot has changed, but if you actually looked at the bottom here, now there's a list of Snowflake data apps. Um, a lot of them are free at the moment. So things like cost optimizer, which sounds really, really cool. The health check that's provided by our partners, right? So I'm going to dive into one of these now. So if I clicked on this, same thing as before with Snowflake marketplace. You're able to see a tile. It gives you a perspective and a description of what it is. So these are the serious, uh, several risk factors involving in determining cost optimization, right? So being able to do this is really, really cool. And you can do this today yourself, right? So you can actually create that application inside of Snowflake and actually share that with the rest of the ecosystem. So if I wanted to get this, I all I have to do is actually click on this get. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you a little bit more about this data set. So, you know, being able to actually use some of these examples is really, really cool, right? So being able to actually just deploy that without you having to actually do all the hard work, right? So this really, really saves time in terms of, you know, if you built something that's actually useful for other people in the community, this is actually an amazing way to actually be able to share that with the rest of the ecosystem. So I click that, I click on the get, you essentially select the warehouse that you want to use to deploy this. So you can choose whatever size warehouse that you want to deploy this. I want to use my load warehouse, which uh, I use for generic users. Um, and there's a number of different options as well, right? So you can actually create an application name that you know once you've actually loaded this into Snowflake. So being able to choose what name this application is is quite useful. I'm just going to choose a name that I'm going to use for this and I'm going to change that to Cost Optimizer Snowflake. I'm going to click this and before you know it, we're going to be able to uh, get that application deployed right inside of my Snowflake. So this is going to take a few minutes. What's going to happen is once that completes, I'm going to get an email from my email inbox. And so um, once that all happens, it's good to go. All right, so we've waited a few minutes. Everything is up and running, ready to go. You can see that I've just refreshed this screen, which gives me the ability to actually open the cost optimizer application. So I'm going to click that now. It's going to open a new page. It's deployed as a um, snow site there. So you can see there, I can, all I need to do is just choose a, uh, a warehouse to use to, to run the, the, the jobs and the, and the tasks that happens. I'm going to choose a quick one. So this is deployed as a streamlit application. You can see that it's actually right in built right inside of Snowflake. So, uh, Streamlit is the open sourced Python library that allows you to do rapid visualization. All right, so the application's up and running now. So we just need to do a couple of setups here. It looks like we just need a couple of grants. All right, here we go. So the application name is the name of the application that we had before. And to find that in the apps area, so we've got a new tab called uh, apps. So we're just going to look at the app that's being installed. The name of the app is called Op Cost Optimizer Snowflake. So I'm just going to run that as so cost optimizer snowflake. I'm just going to copy this because that's the name that I need in order to I click here, change the app name to this. All right. So what it's doing is it's basically going to give the user a couple of privileges. All right. Okay. So we're going to give the Snowflake database privilege to the application. Cool. So we've just given the privilege of database to the application. We are going to also get manage tasks. 
uh, to the application as well, and also a execute task grant across to the application as well. So these are the things that the application actually needs in order to function correctly. I'm going to refresh this now just so that, you know, we're basically going to be able to do what it needs to do. I'm going to choose the warehouse again, choosing the hand on laps warehouse that I've uh, created earlier. We're going to crank up this application and see what it does. All right. So now that the application is actually up and running, I'll just show you some of the different metrics that it can collect and over time do some cost optimization. So if you looked at the Snowflake usage overview, uh, some statistics obviously isn't gathered at the moment, but what you can see here is um, a list of queries by user in the last 30 days. So you can see here who has actually been executing queries over time. Um, for my particular uh, sandbox account, what I've got is obviously a user John that I do a lot, the majority of the demos with, and you can see the number of queries that's actually been done. There's also a ThoughtSpot user here, which is uh, done about 500 queries. And then on the right hand side, you can see the queries by database, right? So I've done a lot of work in terms of actually collecting data from the COVID data set. You can see here that there's a number of queries that's been done by the cost optimizer itself. So there, there's a series of queries that's been gathered. Um, if you look down a bit further, you can see the top 50 costly queries in the last 30, 30 days. And you can see the number of times it's actually run. So in this particular example, I've got a, a, a customer loyalty demo um, data set that I use quite a bit. And it's been executing like about 43, uh, oh, actually 60 times. Um, and every, the average cost or per run is about 43 credits there. So there you can actually see, you know, you've, you can start investigating some of those potentially where we can actually optimize. If you look at the next tab, you can see the warehouse idle time. So this is useful for identifying which warehouses are actually being used over time. You might want to um, decommission or turn off certain warehouses if you see that you know there's a high idle time for these warehouses. So it's about optimizing and trimming your warehouses that you've got using. And on the right hand side, you can see that the, the potential for you know savings as well, right? So being able to actually decrease or suspend using a better factor, you're probably get a reduction of about 20%. It, it's basically saying there, bytes spew to local storage. So this is where you've got a memory exhaustion issue. So if you've got a particular warehouse where it's spilling to local disk, it means that it's basically doing a memory swap. Typically what we recommend at Snowflake is to start investigating whether a larger will improve performance. So that's kind of why we actually look at those parameters. You can also see here down here that there is a list of warehouses that's using data cache. So whenever a, uh, well, I guess whenever a warehouse is using a data cache, it's actually reading from cache rather than from the disk itself. So it's optimized for, you know, fast retrieval of data. You're also not retrieving from the slowest medium that we have, which is the disks, which is useful for, you know, looking at how big a percentage um, those are being utilized as well. So those are all in all the type of metrics that's been gathered for the warehouse area. If you look at auto clustering, if you do have auto clustering in your instance, then this will show up in this particular tab. For me, there isn't any auto clustering, but you know, if you do have auto clustering set up, then this is where you will show up. Materialized views, so you, you've got any materialized views, um, that you use for aggregate data, this will show up in this area. Um, in Snowpipe storage, so in terms of you know how many credits are used for Snowpipe, this will show up in this particular tab. The next tab is to do with the storage area. So if there is you know usage of different tables, how much is that going to potentially save in terms of monthly savings here? Um, in my case, there there's no wastage on transient tables that's been identified. And last but not least, there's a settings area. So you can actually schedule these cost optimizer jobs to run in a, in a schedule, and you can specify those here. 
So you can actually say, I want to run it for every X minutes, right? So um, this works very much like a cron setup. So you would specify which hour or which minute of which day, of which month, of which day of the week that you want to set up to run on a regular schedule. And if you've put those in and hit the update schedule, you will see a list down the bottom. All right, so that's essentially the cost optimization for Snowflake that's actually been delivered by our partner, Entity Data. It looks super cool. I mean, you can also create and deploy these data applications right inside Snowflake and share it with the rest of the world, just like NTT Data has. So with that, thank you for your time. I will catch you the next time. Thank you very much.